Hello everyone, this is Stefan from Lush and Salty Aquariums. You're looking at my three desktop nano tanks and not that anybody's keeping track, but I've made a significant change to the jar aquarium center stage. If you'll forgive the CO2 kit, which I wrap around it to service this tank, Let's talk about what's going on in this one. This was a simple jar aquarium and it was jammed to the gills with plants, mostly um, Rotala and Bacopa stem plants that had emerged and would climb up and make flowers. I did some videos on it and it housed a single female beta. It was tannin rich tank Hard to see through, the stem plants created a dense, dark background, and the beta was hard to see. She was reclusive as some of those fish can be, but honestly, in this tank, her opportunities to swim about were limited, I get that. Anyway, she finally perished, she jumped, I found her the other day, so rather than just add another fish, I dismantled the jar and did a total redo. I used um, some of the existing aquascape and then I added a white sand on top of the ex some of the existing um, fluval aqua soil because I wanted a lighter sense for this aquarium. The other one was so dark, it became conspicuous when I tried to film inside it, and it just wasn't satisfying me. I love the emerged growth I had, and you can see that on the other videos, but I did not enjoy the fish, and I did not enjoy the denseness of inside the bowl itself. So what I've done is eliminate some of the driftwood and just have one piece of spider wood which does not dominate and create so much brown space. I added all the um, Anubius Petite onto that particular piece of driftwood. You see that plant right there. I added a little bit of Japanese clover and some guppy grass. And then I replanted the crypts. Those are the leaf plants, the stem plants and that's it I oh and of course I retained a cutting of um, my pothos there's two varieties a green and white and that might be another kind of plant and then this of course is pothos those were in the tank before and I've continued that in here I was able to mount the air stone with a really neat u-ring which meant it would stay closer to the bottom and i'm still just using that for aeration and i have a small nano heater to keep the temperature at 77 78 degrees room temperature here can get as low as 68 so other than certain species and really all aquarium fish except for a few would appreciate a higher temperature. So that's what I've done. I don't think this aquascape is very special at all. It's a little tacky actually, but I will, I'm hoping the plants will do their thing. And with some manipulation and trimmings, I will have a nice looking aquarium, jar aquarium, kind of like the one I house my least killifish in. There's videos for that as well, but even brighter. I'm considering putting some fry of endlers, of which I've now got a couple dozen babies from probably this line, but they're fry from another tank. Those are males I took out of the endler tank, which is behind me. I might put fries in there and see what they grow out to. I might add some more least killifish. And my third least favorite option is to get another small beta 
a female, one that will stay smaller and less aggressive and be all right in a smaller tank setup such as this one. I added a few inhabitants right off the bat. You, I use tank water, so I'm not too worried about the quality of the aquarium water. Here you see a red ram's horn snail. There's a couple of those in here and a nearite. Now that the bait is out, I may also and likely will add some cherry shrimp because I have tons. You can see a whole bunch right here. And Underneath the gold or albino neon tetras, you see some more there, and I have plenty at all stages of life. Um, from very uh, opaque hybrid strains to Bloody Mary, the deep red strain. I might just trap a few, and that's easy to do in one of these other aquariums and add a half dozen into this one. I'm hoping and continue to uh, expect and desire emerged growth from this tank. To some extent, it provides shade for the other one so this moss won't brown up, it stays lush. And I, I took advantage of that when I had all those stem plants emerging and I might uh, desire doing that again. If you have any thoughts on what would be great in this tank other than what I mentioned, please just let me know. And if you have any questions about base tanks or jar tanks, uh, there's some fine websites online that cover that, but I have some videos as well and I'm happy to help. So as always, keep your hands in the tank and ciao for now.